What is going on guys? So today we're going to be going over my updated Magicka Dragonite build for the Deadlands DLC. Now over the past few weeks I've been testing out DK, trying out all different kinds of setups and skill combinations to see what works best for me. So DK, it feels so good this update. Our sustain is top notch. The burst pressure we have is insane. We are extremely tanky with some amazing healing potential. Now my build is directly optimized for 1vx situations. This setup in my opinion takes the DK to the next level. Not just a dot em up build but a purely insane AoE burst potential to kill 10 or more people with one swift combo. I've been really enjoying the DK as it's one of my favorite classes this update and I want to share my build and what I'm running with you guys today. As always you should use this build video as a template and adapt it to your own personal playstyle. So in this video we're going to go over all the typical topics like gear, skills, champion points and much more. To understand this build fully please be sure to watch the whole video. Timestamps are down below if you guys wish to skip ahead as well as other important links. So as you guys know I change my builds quite often and adjust them around so be sure to check out my live streams to stay up to date on all my current setups and builds. As I'm always really fine tuning my spec and adjusting it when I have different ideas, but I am in the works of creating a website. There's no date yet exactly on when that's going to be finished, but I am working on it. It's just going to take a little bit of time. I guess I'm stealing a, a line off of Zenimax, right? <laughs> but one last thing before we get started. If you guys are enjoying my content, don't forget to subscribe. It's free and you never miss an upload. Also, if this video helps you anyway, don't forget to smash that like button. Without further ado, let's get right into the build. So for my race, I'm a Breton. I think overall, Breton is by far the best race for the DK. I do want to test High Elf, but the only thing that's stopping me is I don't want to spend 6,000 crowns or buy 6,000 crowns just to race change back to Breton that I'm already a good magic at race. So that's the only thing that's stopping me from going to High Elf. I definitely want to test it though. But Breton is just the staple magic race. So the cost reduction helps the DK a lot. We have a lot more sustain now with some of, some of the DK buffs, but it still is a good race to go with just to have this cost reduction. Uh, you also get 4,620 spell resistance, which is another thing that's stopping me from going to High Elf, is I'm going to be a little bit more squishy on, on that race rather than the Breton that's a lot more tanky and has a lot more sustain, which is more valuable in my opinion in a 1VX, especially with this type of build. But you can go High Elf or Breton. Those are my two top choices for this build. Uh, Breton's going to have more recovery, but High Elf's going to have more damage. So adjust with that what you will. Uh, we, we kind of adjusted our jewelry traits just to give us a little bit more damage. And our sustain feels great. And honestly, I feel like we can even drop another sustain glyph for more damage. But I just want to have, have this for the build to give you guys a good starting point. I'm going to be toying around with that. But just giving you guys a heads up on kind of what I'm looking at on this build in the future. So for my Mundus Stone, we are using the Atronach. This is just a staple Mundus for the for all magic builds, really. Because uh, we're using Sugar Skull's food, as we don't get recovery from this. So it's, it's nice to have the Atro. just adds more sustain. You could go with the Spell Damage Mundus, but you're going to get overall pound for pound more value from the Atro than you would with that uh, Mundus Stone. You could even go with the Lover here. Just swear around with it what you like, but I prefer the Atro, just because more sustain is more important in outnumbered situations. For my attributes, um, we have one point into health because I like to be different. Uh, I mean, I don't know why I have this one point, but it doesn't really make a difference. I like to give my builds about 29K health-ish, 29 to 30K health. Uh, and this just happened to be here, so I just left it alone, honestly. Uh, and we have 63 points into magic. So like I said, my food is uh, sugar skulls and then my potions um, I use heroism pots or I mainly mainly use spell damage pots um, this these are alliance potions that you can buy um, they're fairly cheap you just got to get AP uh, you can buy them at the gates uh, from this guy right here this, the siege merchant he has them they have like 720 alliance points each but those are the potions I use um, for my build you don't need much stamina sustain we have a lot of stamina sustain from ultimates and all that and we have 21k stamina as you guys saw so not really too big of a deal there and we are a vampire stage three that's a must in my opinion you can stay with that what you will uh, if you don't want to run it you don't have to but uh, i highly recommend you guys do it it will definitely save your life And then last thing before we get into the gear, let's talk about some of the class changes really quickly here so I can kind of explain why DK is so much more powerful. 
The first thing is the combustion passive. Uh, this alone is very big for the DK as we get 1000 magicka back every single time we proc the burning sass effect uh, every 0.5 seconds. So if we proc it every second, we're going to get a thousand magic per second, which is insane for sustain. This is what's allowing us to go a little bit more damage uh, and we can even go more damage. I definitely want to test that and, and see how far we can push it um, on this spec. That's the biggest thing overall. Uh, and then we also have increased the damage of your flame attacks. This actually used to be a different passive altogether. I, I do believe I think it reduced the cost of Poison ability something like that. I don't remember exactly what it was, but uh, Yeah, that's that's really the big things here. Also We got This bad boy right here battle roar So this kind of scales off of the ultimate consumed rather than ultimate cost to an extent so if you have 500 ultimate you're going to get a lot more resources than if you just use a dragon leap with 135 so that's how like we've getting a lot more sustain this update on the dk it's really all the big things that's changed other than that the charge trait we're going to go into the gear now so i can kind of explain of that more in depth so for the gear we got plague break um I'm going to do a video on this set alone and talk about it, but this is the best 1VX set right now uh, in ESO. No doubt in my mind, this is the best set in the game uh, for outnumbered PvP. If people stack on top of each other, this is like your dream. This is like Vicious Death, sort of on steroids to an extent, and it also provides a little bit of pressure, a single target. Not much, but the, the, the disease and defile aspect of this set alone is very strong for pvp so how does this work so when you deal direct damage which is any type of damage really uh other than obviously our dots but like with a lot of attacks with whip uh the initial hit of engulfing flames dragon leap all of that we put a plague carrier on them they become a plague carrier so i guess it's like covid uh per se but uh, we deal disease damage over time for 10 seconds uh, over the duration if they cleanse or get rid of it somehow with the purge they explode, infecting enemies within 8 meters of them and dealing 3,337 disease damage. The explosion deals an additional 50% damage per enemy hit. So this means if there's 6, 7 people, this thing is going to be hitting for 6, 7, 8, 9, 10k. So it's going to explode. It's, it's like Vicious Death, but like the stamina kind of version. But this gives such good hybrid stats now since the changes to this. This is ultimately, in my opinion, better than Vicious Death because it does provide a little bit of single target pressure uh, with the defile and just the dot itself it's just very very good it gets up to about i think like 11k 10 11k uh with our spell damage buff and all that so back bar they do trickery you cannot go wrong on the dk uh with this set it's in my opinion best in slot because we can utilize a front bar set like play break and a back bar set like data trickery then we can use a monster set like blood spawn and then we can have a one piece malakath so that's kind of kind of the build per se. Um, Blood Spawn is so valuable on the Dragonite. Uh, I highly recommend you guys try this. You could run Magma if you wanted to, but Blood Spawn is it, just a staple Dragonite set. It gives you ultimate gen, which is nice, and it gives a, a little bit of tankiness. So it's not that bad compared to Magma, but the ult gen is, is definitely what you're going for on the DK. It adds a lot of sustain. And this is really how you're going to kill people is with your ultimates uh, and utilizing all this together. We're using a one piece trainee for the extra health bonuses because we are utilizing a front bar, back bar, monster and mythic items. We have access to this. And then, like I said, the one piece Malakath. So let me talk about jewelry traits, uh, talk about enchants, traits on my gear, traits on our weapons and all that. So front bar, we are using a Nernhon mace. These are both maces and we have a absorb stamina enchant the reason why we're using this is because we have charged and this allows us to increase our chances to proc status effects i was kind of gonna go either poison here or absorb stamina the reason why we're doing absorb stamina though is because we can proc the sundered status effect which is a 3000 armor reduction so having this extra charge trait which increases the status effect chances to apply especially it's a highly proc on our enchants then we can actually reduce their armor by 3000. We don't have access to major breach. So this is helping us a little bit in our in our penetration category uh, to give us a little bit more, more damage. You're not really caring about the damage of the enchant itself or the stamina return. This is mainly just for the physical damage to proc this under effect. 
Um, and then on our offhand, we're using uh, Shock Enchant for the minor vulnerability, 5% damage increase on the target. Uh, the charge effect increases our enchants, increases the effect of our skills to apply status effects. So this is what was buffed on the DK as well. It was charged is uh, on a two-handed weapon, you're going to get 480%. So on a one-handed weapon, you get 240. And this ultimately adds a lot of sustain because we're dealing mat or dealing flame damage to proc the burning effect, which gives us 1,000 magic back every 0.5 seconds if we proc the burning effect. So all this combined together this also increases our chances to proc the disease effect from plague break so we not only do we proc the minor vulnerability we proc the minor breach from the sundered from this enchantment we can proc the defile the um from, from the disease damage we can also proc burning so we have a lot of status effects that really play into into this build increasing our damage and increasing our sustain and all of that so that's why we're utilizing all this here for the back bar, we have a resto uh, powered. Uh, I think that's pretty much best in slot, especially to buff up those uh, dragon bloods. You could go defending here. They're pretty much neck and neck, but uh, I prefer at least powered right now. And then we're using weapon and spell damage here to just to boost our damage up a little bit. So armor weights uh, for our gear, we're using one heavy, two heavy, three heavy, uh, one light, two light, three light and then one plague break hands medium so we have three light three heavy one medium now you want to make sure you have your plague break on your hands as this is the smallest armor value under the the belt so make sure you have a light belt and medium hands of plague break and then you're good to go on everything else and you can just kind of intermatch what you have so armor traits i'm using some sturdy um some well fitted so i'm using right now one sturdy too sturdy and that's it one heavy reinforced chest now this is a staple do not deviate from this one heavy reinforced chest is the way to go we have one end pen two end pen three end pen i would not go more than three i think three is pretty decent and we have one wall fitted so you can kind of adjust what you want around but this is what i like um i definitely like the blocking aspect on the dk a little bit more so you could run Changes to both, or you could change this to 30 if you wanted to. But, you know, I like a little bit of rule dodge cost reduction as well. Uh, and then for our enchants, we have all tri stats on our gear. And then for our jewelry, we're using two infused cost reduction and one swift spell damage. I like the movement speed of this. Now, you could, could run uh, spell damage here. You could do 278. That's going to be in a few spell damage. I definitely want to test that though and get a little bit more damage and see how much sustain I lose from using this. And it's probably going to be quite a bit. So I'm probably just going to stick with this for now because I do BGs and Cyrodiil. So I like to be viable in both. So I don't have to change all my jewelry uh, intents around every single time I go do one or the other. So that is pretty much all for the gear, guys. So let's go over some gear alternatives very quickly. Uh, if you don't want to do Plague Break, then this build really alters, and I don't recommend changing this. But if you have to or don't like this or don't have it or whatever, a Burning Spell Wave is a good option as well, uh, or Vicious Death. Those are the, really the two aspects of this set that you could change. But Plague Break is really the, the crooks of this build and kind of how we play it and how we're having so much kill potential, especially killing, uh, fighting multiple people. They did trickery. I don't really think there's a good um, back bar set other than this or Iron Blood. Iron Blood could be decent, but you're going to be so slow. I just don't like Iron Blood personally. I I've actually never used it before, but Danger Trickery is just so good. You get Expedition, Protection, Mending, Heroism, more Vitality. All those buffs are amazing on the Dragonite. So, I mean, it's just a staple, right? I mean, you can use something else if you wanted to, but I think Danger Trickery is just the way to go. Monster set, you can do Grothdar here or Magma, but I prefer Blood Spawn. It's just better in my opinion, but you can run what you like. That's just a few options you guys have. So now let's go over the skills. So we're using Flame Lash. Uh, this is a typical no-brainer skill on the DK. Uh, basically what this is, is your main spammable. So if we proc the enemy off balance, which we can proc with it several ways with our Talons and our Fossilize, uh, we can proc the power lash which will deal more damage cost half as much and it will immediately heal us for 8078 health 
So this is kind of your main swimmable as you're like as you proc your off balance. I'll kind of explain that in the commentary more, but this is your main swimmable skill that you're going to use most of the time. Uh, now we have a deep breath. Now this is a skill I really like. This is what makes this whole build come together, uh, utilizing plague break and having all these other AOE skills like engulfing flames and using burning talons. This is what kind of ties the build with a plague break burst, especially in our back bar ultimate. It just hits so, so hard. This is what keeps you alive in your corrosive so you can still heal yourself a little bit and burst people. So you basically inhale and it does magic damage and heals you for the damage caused. And then after two and a half seconds, you exhale fire around you, uh, basically dealing an insane amount 9.2K flame damage to nearby enemies. Also, if anybody's channeling anything like with Radiant Oppression uh, or they're using any type of like Sigil skill like the like the one that you sit still, uh, I forget what it's called, but any type of channel ability will knock people off balance if they're reviving somebody. It's very powerful in 1vx situations. Uh, this will knock them on the ground and they'll be set off balance, which will allow you to go into Flame Lash Bam, which will proc healing and, and more damage and cost half as much. So this is kind of what interlink, interlinks these two skills together, but you're mainly going to use this for the AoE burst. Uh, Burning Talons is how you're going to get your Flame Lash procs somewhat. Uh, it provides a nice AoE you know, flame damage plus the damage over time effect. And the synergy is not too bad either. So this is definitely an overall good skill. It helps you with crowd control, immobilize enemies uh, around you. It's very, very good. Trust me, you really want to use this skill, especially with this type of spec using Plague Break and all that. Uh, fossilize, this is your main stun. I do like Shattering Rocks, but I do like the immobilization aspect of Fossilize. It definitely helps, especially in lag when skills don't work and all of that. To help proc your off balance aspect of flame lash so there are immobilized immediately so you don't have to go into burning talents right in right after fossilize so uh shattering ox is fine but i think fossilize is a better morph here engulfing flames now this is a insane burst uh, when you pair this up with a deep breath with your flame lash with your corrosive or even a uh, ferocious leap um this is a good dot, plus it has a good burst potential. Like, you know, it does a lot of damage. 7k flame damage on initial hit is insane. This is completely unbuffed, by the way. Uh, with 11k dot, plus it increases all their damage taken with flame attacks by 9% right now. But that'll go up with more offensive skills, like, or with their offensive stats, like uh, Major Sorcery. So, this is what we're using on our front bar and on the DK. Now, Ferocious Leap is interchangeable. Uh, this skill has been freaking bugged for years at this point. It's been about, I, I want to say, a year at least. Maybe even close to a year and a half. Um, so this is bugged in BGs and Imperial City. So if you want to utilize a different ultimate, uh, you have Vampire Ultimate or you have um, Dawnbreaker, which I need to level up and get and use the Dawnbreaker with Smiting. Now, the reason why I recommend this more... Eh, overall is because you're going to get more weapon and spell damage for slotting this more ultimate per kill so i think this is ultimately the better morph in my opinion if you're going to go with dawnbreaker go with dawnbreaker of smiting uh, but i don't have it morphed so uh, i i try to actually use my class ultimate but i'd love to be able to use it uh, oftentimes it, it just bugs out and doesn't let you uh, use it so take it with that what you will uh, it's very frustrating i will say that so for the back bar, uh, we're using Radiating Regeneration. This is kind of a change I, I've adapted on a few builds like my Magplar and my Mag DK uh, mainly. Um, this just allows for more uptime on my healing, which is very good. So we don't have Rapid Regen because that only lasts for five seconds and only affects one person. Radiating Regeneration heals three people and it just ticks half as, half as much. So it's going to tick once every two seconds rather than once every one second. The healing is the same regardless, but we actually get the healing pretty much. Like, if we're in PvP, oftentimes you guys know the pain of hitting your rapid region and not getting healed from it. And you have to hit another skill that's going to be two seconds overall. Because each skill is on a global cooldown of one second. So, it's very frustrating. You guys know the, know the pain. This kind of alleviates that issue. And as we're going offensive, we're still going to get healing from this. So, this is why I like it. Plus, it's very strong in BGs as they do stack with other radiating regenerations. This is very good overall. Trust me, you definitely want to try this morph. Flames of Oblivion. Now, this is uh, really strong. I, I love this morph and, and this skill now. Um, last patch, it only shot out two flame balls. Now it shoots out three, so it hits three enemies. Uh, it gives us major savagery and major prophecy, increasing our critical chance, which it does increases our chance of critical healing with our coax. This is very powerful. 
if you want more healing, you can go Carterize. You could go Carterize if you want to. But now with a DK how it is with our sustain, we can seriously just spam Coag just about all the time. And they have reduced the cost uh, over the past few patches. So it doesn't cost that much. You know, it's, it's still expensive, but it's not terrible, right? So our, our main burst heal is going to be Coag. Uh, this will scale off of our spell damage. And yeah, so it's it's your main burst heal. Uh, I mean, there's really not too much to say about it. Volatile armor, this is a nice dot. Uh, and the damage return is not to be laughed at. This damage return is insane against uh, Stamina Templars. Uh, if you dot up a Templar and you and you have this also hitting them, this will absolutely nuke their health bar. Uh, it, it's insane. So if you have this up plus the dot plus all your other dots with flames, uh, engulfing, talons, all of this, it will literally burst somebody in about two seconds flat. Especially when you go into your ultimate. So th this just gives you your armor buff plus a dot plus damage return. It's insane. It's really overtuned in my opinion. But hey, I don't make the game, right? So Elusive Mist, this is your flex spot. This skill works about 10% of the time, just about maybe 20 on a good day. Uh, but we're still using it for uh, shits and giggles, I guess. I don't know. You'd probably be better off using uh, Race Against Time. But we're using Malakath, so I still want to utilize something to an extent to where my race against time isn't worthless to the extent that, that I just get movement speed. But in a crunch time, I would have race against time over elusive mist, but I do like the extra spell damage I get from the vampire passive uh, 300 uh, weapon and spell damage from coming out of mist form. That's the only reason why I have it, honestly, is to go offensive rather than just going defensive because it's it. you don't really need it when you're going defensive. So if you're going to die, you're going to die already anyways. And Elusive Mist is not going to save you because you're just going to get pulled out of it in two seconds. So, that's my thoughts on that. Uh, Corrosive. This is your best ultimate. This is what you're going to use 99% of the time because your Ferocious Elite never works. But, no joke, seriously. Uh, Corrosive is one of the best ultimates on the DK now. The fact that you can ignore resistances on your enemy it is insane. So, we have Plague Break. Keep in mind, so we're going to go Deep Breath, Talons, Engulfing Flames, Flames of Oblivion. Uh, we have corrosive up uh, we have our dots with volatile so we have so much aoe burst potential and explosions and single target pressure and staying in the fight with our flame lash that we can seriously just put an absolute beating on somebody we can deep breath have three or four people around us focus the weakest person in the group they die to play break and explode then two other people explode and then the whole group is dead at that point that's kind of how you want to play this build you want to utilize your corrosive and wait for that you only use your ferocious leap whenever it's not bugged and whenever you feel like you can kill them and they're running away or there's a, like you, you don't have enough time to you know go go to corrosive so you can kind of defensive ulti with this um, that's the only reason why i'm really not leveling up my dawnbreaker as much uh with this ultimate because this still is useful whenever it works because the damage shield isn't too bad honestly so that is pretty much all for the skills So let's go over buff stats really quickly here. Um, so just regular, just buffed with our armor buff. We have 20k a physical and 25k spell. 3300 spell damage. Uh, so that's our recovery. Our recovery looks pretty dookie, but remember we have all that cost reduction. So let me go down here and buff up all my spell damage. It's very simple. Um, so that's my spell damage buff. So with spell damage up, we have 4k. That's a pretty easy number to remember. 4k spell damage with a light attack buff, we have... 4400 um so our tooltip skills are pretty decent i would say about 11k tooltip uh 20k leap you know that's not terrible a lot of the dk's damage is just overall pressure from dots and from all your skills ticking and, and especially with the plague break and all that all this exploding at once is kind of what this what this kind of cohesively comes together um stats overall you know you're going to get your major protections you're getting a lot more value from major trickery of them what shows up on your stat sheet because the major mending is insane and all that and typically just how you proc it is just dealing damage right so it, it, it the heroism is amazing the ulti region is amazing and all that so that's pretty much all for the stats and the skills so let's go over the champion points um this is my staple cp i run on pretty much all of my builds uh, to an extent um so I'm going to go up here on the top right. So we're using Deadly Aim for our whip and our single target dots. Um, so we have Engulfing Flames. 
you know, burning talons, those are all considered single target damage over times. After the initial AOE hits, all this is single target, so this will increase the damage over time of our dots. Uh, it will increase the damage of a flame lash as well, so so that all that is good. For our AOE skills, it's going to buff deep breath. This is going to buff engulfing initial hit. It's going to buff talons initial hit. It's going to buff Frocher's leap initial hit. All of our damage, basically. Uh, yeah, yeah, so it's going to buff all that. This will actually also buff our flames of oblivion as well. Uh, Master in arms. This buffs all direct damage. So the exhale of engulfing Frocher's leap. You guys get the drift. All these buff all of our damage. Okay, that's pretty simple. I would not do thaumaturge because you're going to get more value from deadly aim because thaumaturge just increases the area effect of like ash cloud uh the blockade that's really it of damage over time effects that's not going to be considered deadly aim so definitely keep that in mind uh i know dk that may utilize this i just kind of want to um, maybe open you guys eyes to you actually get more value from this and then for my last one you can go either duelist rebuff or uh ironclad i like and i prefer duelist rebuff because of the single target dots Plus, this reduces damage from like Dizzy Swing, End Cap, Surprise Attack, all single target skills that actually hurt, right? So, you can go Duelist Rebuff, or Ironclad, sorry. This will reduce everything like single target and AoE, except for uh, single target dots. So, I, I find that I dive more to dots and, and like, you know, DKs, dotting me up, you know, Magic, Stamina Decay, whatever, uh, with a lot of them around me, than I actually do to like templars so that's kind of what i kind of adjust around for my play style but you can definitely you know adjust whatever you want to so for my red tree we have survival instincts this is a no-brainer um one of the best cp slotables in the game we have pain's refuge for the mitigation sustained by suffering for the recovery and celerity for the speed um that's really it for the cp other than you know the, the trashy green which is seriously irrelevant and literally has like there's no use for it really just about so uh you can run what you want here uh i recommend rationer liquid efficiency is fine but i do see it's blessing on this build with master gatherer and plentiful harvest you don't have to do that but if you're trying to optimize for combat do rationer liquid efficiency seeds blessing and like gifted rider or warm mount one of those two are are, are decent uh, with that type of spec but that's what i use uh you don't have to copy and paste what, whatever works for you for the green tree is really whatever works for you man it doesn't really make a difference honestly so that's pretty much all for the build and the cp skills gear traits and enchants uh race mundestone i'll just quickly go over this all this really quickly atro vamp 63 magic one health um that's really it guys uh so now let's go into the gameplay commentary kind of explain how to play this build in action and kind of what you're looking for and you know kind of you know how this build plays pretty much all right guys so here we have the first clip on the dk now this is going to just show you the pure strength of plague break and its potential its power um so we have several blues here as you see and we we're about to hit our corrosive right now we go into the deep breath talons and then go into a whip, kill one, kill two, <laughs> then they all explode. I'm trying to leap, but guess what? Uh, my leap is bugged. So that is how powerful Plague Break is. Let's kind of roll that back really quickly here so you guys can see exactly how to do this. So we're kind of we're gonna focus this guy really quickly. Gonna kind of play a little bit passive, waiting for that boss to die. Coming into the group, there's eight or nine. We talons them immediately and then go into our elusive miss, go into our corrosive, talons, deep breath, a killing one, killing two, and then they all explode. Uh, and that's pretty much a GG, guys. That is legit, like how powerful play break is on this build. And ultimately why I love this spec. It's so good for one VX. Uh, we really play around our engulfing flames and our deep breath over our uh, burning embers for our main burst heal so that's it for the verse clip very simple uh <laughs> very self-explanatory on the burst potential that we have on this spec so next we have a little bit of 1vx slash 2vx magic sork spamming overloads uh trying to help us out so this was a little bit longer clip i trimmed it a little bit so we're we, we've already wiped them about six of them i would say but now they're all respawning um so now we have two right now two or three four um so just kind of keeping our dots up, trying to go a little bit offensive to see kind of what we have. We get hit by a meteor. 
Uh, we get pulled out of Elusive Mist immediately by the Dark Convergence. Um, doing a little bit of burst on him, kill him. I'm gonna heal up a little bit. I hit our Talons, Deep Breath, Fossilize right into a Light Attack Whip. Light Attack Whip, and we proc the Power Lash for the heal. Kill him. Now we got four or five people on us here just, just spamming attacks. There's people coming from the sides. So we're trying to stay alive, play, play a little bit of kiting play style. We got several people here. Go into a Deep Breath, Talons into a Leap. We're gonna whip him, whip him, trying to kill him. Got one kill on that guy. I'm gonna play a little bit defensive, hit our Flames of Oblivion, go into a, a Talons, a Fossilize into a Light Attack Whip, Light Attack Whip, kill him. Now we're gonna need to heal up a little bit. These guys are, you know, spamming with, with bow attacks and all that. So we're gonna hit our Deep Breath, Talons, Leap into a Power Lash, trying to f stun, but uh, we killed one and killed two there. This guy is rezzing with Deep Breath to stun him, go into a Whip Spam. Uh, there, he's the healer, I do believe. So this guy's reviving. Uh, this guy over here. So really couldn't do anything about it. We need to play defensive. So this guy reses. I immediately focus that guy. Hit him with a leap. There's three down. And then we have to clean up this Nightblade for the last kill. And that's a GG. So that's another wipe on those guys. Uh, yeah. So that's how powerful Plague Break is in 1VX. Um, this guy wants to fight me but doesn't. Because he, he's just too tanky. He just doesn't die. But regardless... That's how you play the build. Um, watch these clips kind of over and over and kind of see my combos and see kind of what I do. Your main combo is gonna be Deep Breath, Talons, Fossilize, Whip, Whip. That's legit the basic aspect of your combo. Uh, defensively, you wanna hit your Radiant Regeneration and then go into a Coag. If you need more of a Burst Heal, go into your Coag first. But that's pretty much it in a nutshell, other than keeping up your buffs and using your Spell Power Pots. Um, try to utilize your potion and your ultimate kind of 50 50 so use your potion and then about you know halfway through the region of your of your pot then you can use your ultimate that's what i recommend that's to get the most of the same possible but you know that's just that's just in an ideal scenario sometimes you don't have that ability so definitely keep that in mind but that's how you're going to sustain mostly is through ultimates and potions uh, your recovery isn't the greatest but we do have enough cost reduction so that is all for the video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed and kind of learned something about the DK and maybe maybe enjoy this playstyle. But that's it for me. I hope you guys have a good rest of your day and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.